up and up we go and up and further up we go. Up the building. There's our beauty. Yes. Okay. You can stop with the complaining. Yes. Alright, I'm gonna look away. I'm not watching. Oh. So we're, we're doing the nonchalant thing. So I didn't do a very good job of tracking, but what she did was she flew off of Bradfield across Tower Road, looped out over the athletic fields there, and uh, flew back and crossed over the face of Bradfield and came around to the east side and landed here on the ledge. Rule number one, don't make eye contact with a peregrine falcon. <clears throat> so we still don't know what the replacement plan is for the bark stripping tree for BR. Most of you know that that is missing. It was cut down this year. Even though it seemed like there was 80% of it was still good to go as far as raw materials. <coughs> Just saying. My knees are all wet. He just looks very content up there. Isn't that nice? Oh. Hello, sweetheart. Wow. She really does look funny when she fluffifies like that. When you look at her with the, the binoculars, she's just all, all roughed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, it's time to get some better equipment. We really have to pull the trigger. Why doesn't she just bring a bowl out to wherever her eyes, you know, dunk her head in and out in the bowl or something like that? Or take the iPad into the bathroom? I mean, what's the deal? Yep, she's got, uh, she's got de-poofing-itis. Or re-poofing-itis. Or whatever. Activity now on campus. The human race is lighting up a little bit here. I can't go to Wegmans with my knees 
the pants of my knees all wet. Or the knees of my pants, whatever. Guess I'll have to stay out here until they dry. I'll be back in a second, guys. Are you tossing furniture around there, Keith? <laughs> it sounds like Keith is dismantling his house oh, in my earpiece. <coughs> well, so we might have a little bit more sunlight on this beautiful girl in just this instant here. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Come on, let's get some sunshine on her. We're going to have a couple of minutes here of sunshine before it goes away again behind the clouds. Look at that beauty. Wow. Very happy there. Very happy. I think I lost keys. He might have hung up on me. Pretty girl, that's for sure. So I hope everybody's having a good morning. I know that chat is pretty lively and uh, we've been here for whatever. 
I don't know, at least an hour. And uh, I'm following this beautiful peregrine that Keys found on the cam this morning around 6.45. Oh, here comes the sun. Look at that. Oh, awesome. Superb. Superb. Wow. So she's on the east side of the building. She's been here most of the time that we were, we've been here. She was on the west side under the eye, watchful eye of the big Cornell cam this morning. And then she flew out over that athletic field a few minutes after we got here and landed on this side on uh, Ezra and BR's night-night perch here on the east side of Bradfield. And she's been here ever since, and she's been pretty happy. She's on some preening, and she's showing off for us. And she did some calling early on when we first got here. She's probably not happy with me showing up over on this side. But she settled down and uh, putting up with the activity and all the raucous laughter and some of the students and cars and that are starting to show up. And, and the sunshine is just amazing. Look at that. So she's uh, nine stories up on the side of Bradfield. Yep, she's pretty, pretty attentive this morning. Last time I saw her, she had her back turned to us the whole time practically, but today she's really been just looking around and enjoying herself. Kind of poofed out as much as she can poof. She doesn't have pantaloons apparently so much. But she does have her, her head and chest and shoulder plumage, you know, poofed out nicely. Pretty awesome. I don't know whether or not those uh, other ledges that I showed earlier and that are on this side of the building that are sort of deeper and wider or longer, um, whether or not they are solid on top or not and would make a, a great scrape. That's assuming, of course, that BR and Ezra wouldn't put up a fuss. But she sure is happy there for the time being. Quite a treat for us to have her here this morning. So Bogget did do a drive about earlier this morning and uh, did not find BR or Ezra anywhere, but uh, who knows, with the, uh, you know, even a little bit of sun sunlight can warm some of these big flat surfaces around here like the roads and the parking lots and stuff enough to get a a nice bit of a float. We have a little bit of snow flitting through the air here. So maybe the birds will, the uh, Arnezra will pop out and show themselves. In the meantime, she seems to be doing pretty well, though she's pretty observant. I don't know if she's looking around, uh, she's getting hungry or if she's looking around for. Uh, for the red tails, or you know what she's got on her mind.
<laughs> so we had a, a late night with the concert last night. We got in <clears throat> around 11.30 and uh, of course, you know, kind of wake early, 4.35. And then somebody started texting, you know, and it was just like non-stop. <coughs> Most of it yik-yakking about this beautiful girl. something. Let's see what time it is. It is 10.12 already. Wow. So she's been here on Bradfield in one place or another since 6.45 this morning. So three and a half hours. That's amazing. That is something. Yes. Yep. We've been here. We're, the world's been watching you for three and a half hours this morning. Started out on the big Cornell cam, and now we're over here. Sort of out of sight line for the Cornell cam, and we're watching you here. All right, let me get my binoculars up and have another look. Boy, she's really, really poofed out and got her head tucked in there, down into her shoulders. I know we're at a steep angle here, but oh, a little better. Okay, so we'll hop on the big, the mighty battery here. And uh, kind of ties us to the cam a little bit more. <coughs> 